You ever, like, sit down to do something and you realize this is probably a horrible mistake? <laughs> yeah, whenever I wake up. <laughs> hey, everyone. You kind of know me. I'm Jenny. This is my friend Madison. Hello. We are starting a new series on the channel called Rewatching Ruby, A Descent Into Madness. <laughs> Ruby is such an enigmatic show to approach. And what's interesting is that the only reason that I know it exists is because she showed it to me in middle school. So you're the reason. I can blame you for this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ruby something. It is. Unfortunately, I left you behind. You did. Or you left me behind. I have not watched it since maybe 2016, 2017. I don't know what year that translates to. That's our sophomore, junior year. Okay, so I stopped watching it senior year, I think. Yeah. I. Which was 2018. Oh, God, we're old. Old. <laughs> old. So old. Like, when we were in middle school, only one volume was out, um, for context. Yeah. So, like, um, does that give us, like, a veteran's discount? It has to. In order to show someone Ruby, like... Half the episodes were the trailers. Yeah. Whenever I was <laughs> forcing everyone to watch it in middle school. <laughs> yeah. And it worked. It worked. It, it worked. worked. <laughs> um, I got hooked on the Nevermore fight. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's funny enough, though, is that I told her, I'm only going to watch the show if all the episodes are out. Which was a half-truth. <laughs> all the episodes of volume one were out. Yeah. They're on volume nine now. I think that just started releasing, which is why we're here. Um, you ever wonder why we're here? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Red vs. Blue is the better show. <laughs> yes. I'm sure. That's the one I've rewatched already. Mm hmm My own time. Cried. Yep. Every second. Mm hmm I would get text updates. Yes. Amazing stuff. The reason that I'm doing this is because in order to make a video about any show, I obviously have to watch it slash rewatch it. And Ruby is a kind of show where you shouldn't have to suffer alone. <laughs> Here I am for moral support. <laughs> it's, it's, what, it's, it's amazing. Uh, we're here. We are in the red, white, black, and the yellow afterthought of... Yes. Yellow does not look good on my skin tone. Um, it rarely looks good on anyone. Right. I'm not technologically inept enough to do, like, actual reactions. So we're going to come back after every volume and give you our thoughts and impressions. She has the more official notebook, but, like, I must point out that my clipboard opens. Mine has a smiley face, so Superior. we know who's winning. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything else that you would like to contribute? Um, I think it's just important context to know what kind of fan I was. Okay. Um, intense Weiss and John shipper. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Nora is me. I am Nora. She is. No Ren in my life. <laughs> Tragically. Um, <laughs> and Penny is the love of my life. Mm -hmm. And I heard that it's not good for me for some reason. <laughs> it's 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 not. Um, <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> so I'm so excited to rewatch this. Um, I guess my version of that is I am unfortunately Blake. <laughs> <laughs> no Yang in my life. So. <laughs> No, we're killing it. We're, we're, we're thriving <laughs> right now. Um, on this beautiful spring day, we are sitting inside and watching trash anime. Where else? Where else should we be? Nowhere else. Where I'd rather else? be with you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Um, I think that's enough preamble. Um, let's get into it. No, I hate that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay. Let's get into, into it. it. So we're back from rewatching the first four trailers. It's quite interesting. A lot of laughing. A lot fun of times. I'm 13 again. <laughs> oh my goodness. Every end of the trailer, it said, coming soon, 2013. That's 10 years ago. Stop. I hate that. I hate that so much. Red trailer. <laughs> Red. Iconic. For sure, iconic. First note, of course, is music. Yes. Which is what got me into Ruby in the first place. Mm -hmm. I would just like watch the YouTube videos of that person that did it where like, they had the sound moving and all the different remixes. God, I remember that. And, like, <laughs> the music. 
No, it like, was... Jeff Williams went ham on those scores, yes. especially for the first two, because I think his best RVB music is not the songs with lyrics, it's the instrumentals. I'm the I say ooh gal, so... <laughs> that doesn't count. <laughs> He is very good with keeping themes yes. and making great use of and musical themes. Motifs. Yeah. Like, his motifs for Tex and Carolina literally fight each other in the soundtrack, and it's amazing. It's incredible. But yeah, no, the red trailer uh, is inscribed into my soul. Instant serotonin. Yes. The yes. little details of, like, the bullets falling at the end. Of course. And just, there's so many different, you could pause any of the trailers and each shot you could, like, use as a thumbnail. They're, like... All the way through, artistically iconic. I think, I think I drew <laughs> something from at least each trailer, at least once, because mm-hmm. um, they were also great. Like you said, every scene, mm-hmm. shot. Yeah, my favorite. Going back to the like the weapons and the music. Yes, was, it's towards the end where like bunch of shooting, mm-hmm. but it, like lines up. It doesn't exactly line up with the music. It's in addition to the music. Yeah, they like. like it's chills. It's like screaming. The small design change of going forward, she does not have the cross on her belt. Uh, a smart move, in my opinion, because that indicates a world of remnant where Jesus existed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> does she keep the crosses on her? I think cape they, I think the cape stays the same, but I think that that changes into her emblem. Makes sense. It's um, good. Yes. This is also the only trailer without a quote. That's true. Which adds to the fact that Ruby doesn't have much personality going forward. <laughs> Our thoughts. Our thoughts. Head or... empty. Head <laughs> empty. That came across as mean. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> what, my comment was more R-W-B-Y, not, you know, R-U, not at Ruby the character. More like, there was no intentional thought. Right. Um, like, this was the most just Monty going off and making something and saying, it's going to be a show. Yes. And that became a bit of a pattern. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, for better or worse. Yeah. So not a lot of thoughts on the red trailer because everyone has already said everything that is to be said about the red trailer. It's... It's great. It's great. Real quick, I had bloodshed yes. and it covered in hearts because, <laughs> like, I didn't, like, if you, like, think about it, like, truly really did just murder dozens upon dozens and dozens yeah. of which i mean soulless creatures soulless but, creatures whatever but it's, it's mass murder still but like i it's hard to remember my 13 year old self watching it for the first time mm. who was she barely recall <laughs> but like watching it now i'm like dang violent <laughs> anyways white, white trailer, trailer. Um, love the opening quote yes um so i wrote it down Everyone is entitled to their own sorrow, for the heart has no metrics or form of measure, and all of it irreplaceable. I love that. I love it. Like, if only, I wish Ruby had had a quote, because, like, keeping with the aesthetics, each quote hints at what the characters' story arcs are supposed to be, mm-hmm. but they actually wind up being might vary <laughs> a bit, but it gives yeah. you a good idea of who they are, and we didn't know, we still don't know. Were these actual, like, quotes taken from somewhere? Or are they just yeah. made-up quotes? Because there was no person referenced in the quote. Nothing referenced. And, uh, like, seeing quotes in the beginning does automatically make me think of RVB season six, seven? The Chancellor director. Six. Six. Makes me think of that, because the beginning of that season it has the quote. Dear director. <laughs> <laughs> um, it starts with a quote, like, when humans are faced with whatever beautiful every, every alternative is possible yeah yeah and but that's from the show yeah like it's not from something it's like said in show said in show and it works so well in show yes it's so well. rvb is great <laughs> <laughs> this is just gonna devolve into us gushing about rvb RV. what's really cool is that we're gonna get to see casey lee williams develop as a vocalist throughout the series because not much gets better with ruby with time except for casey singing because she was like Roughly our age. She is our age. She yeah. is our age. Um, Which is don't you just feel crazy. underaccomplished? <laughs> mm-hmm. I know. She, but you can definitely hear. But I don't like. I haven't listened too much of the recent stuff. But mm-hmm. I do follow her on Instagram, so I hear her every once in a while. Right. But you hear the change from going classically trained, mm-hmm. which is showcased yes. wonderfully in this song, to more of like a stylized, punk definitely rock. that punk rock influence from her dad yeah. and everything. <laughs> No, I have heard her, the volume nine opening that she wrote, and I'm like, she learned songwriting structure from her dad, which is 
verse, chorus, verse, ear melting guitar solo, final chorus. <laughs> there may or may not be a bridge. <laughs> um, that's optional. <laughs> the red trailer is so iconic, but I think that the white trailer is my favorite trailer from the overall production of it like you combine in the quote you combine in the symbolism of the night that she's fighting the colors the stark contrasts the fact that literally it flips so that she is a mirror image of herself Mm -hmm. while she's fighting so you don't know if it's like a literal fight that happened or if it's all a metaphor yeah because obviously white trailer is something you could separate from it Mm -hmm. and almost like view as like a short film yes because like you understand you could interpret it as like the night may or may not be real, but either way, she's could be like, like if I were to just view this as just like a random film, but like, oh, the night is like her, you know, the enemy mm-hmm. of like maybe like anxiety on stage or just like performing for people on the day to day. It could so, stand for anything. Yeah, and it's th- different. You're anything. right. Um, you put it like that's a perfect way of putting <laughs> it. And I think that's why it's so much more compelling mm-hmm. because it has a story yes. there, not. Perfect. Badass. Move up to the next car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like it doesn't like red is like badass fighting. Mm-hmm. And it's then, more showing off Ruby's weapon than Ruby. Yeah. This yeah. shows off Weiss. Weiss for sure. And it, but it does. I know there wasn't too much thoughts pre planning. <laughs> Head empty. <laughs> um, when it comes to the show, mm-hmm. but possibly there was in the case of your showcasing like two very different styles already. Yep. The, like, introduction of, like, magic. Yeah. Magic. It's what magic. it is. Um, Except that it's not magic. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, volume three. Um, and then I also really liked how we got to see Weiss get beat up. Yes. When com- especially compared to the red trailer. Yeah. Where, like, Ruby's just totally owning these <laughs> soulless creatures. And Weiss is, like, getting knocked down. She gets the scar. Weiss is the glass cannon. And it works so well with her fighting style of she has so many things to offer to the fight, but, like, one hit. Yeah. And that we see the blood. Now, I remember the age-old controversy of, did the scar actually come from the hit or not because of the animation error of the blood is on one side and you see the scar poking out on the other side, and I almost stabbed myself in the eye with a pencil, so (laughs) there would have been a very different turn in the video. But, like, I really don't... I think it is just from the trailer. I think the problem is budget. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a lot of problems with early Ruby is determining artistic intent versus budget. And when in doubt, it's budget. Mm -hmm. Because I don't trust their artistic intent. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And we also get the introduction of the moon slowly breaking. Yes. Which is a great stylistic element. I hate... I remember what the story implications are from volume six. And I hate it. But I love the aesthetics. (laughs) I don't, I don't know. I don't remember. I love the Spoilers! Um, which, as another thing, I love the scenery in this. Because mm-hmm. even though it's just the black and white, I mean, you had the audience at the beginning that right. you kind of see. Right. Which is, you know, it's whatever. It's whatever. But just, like, black and white to have, like, that building, cathedral-lookingness. Mm-hmm. I love that so much more than, like, Red Trailer. Yeah. Where it's just, like trees and mm-hmm. even at some point i couldn't tell the difference between the trees and the monster right oh, white trailer is just so good i love the white trailer um like right. it feels sacrilegious to say that it's better than the red trailer but like i prefer it I prefer to it. the red trailer um i have slay as a comment it is an apt comment um grunt noises introduction yes we hear voice acting kara kara queen <laughs> 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 we hear our first actual grunt yeah, and but and that's it. Yeah, and um, in the same vein, we'll say it is jarring to hear why sing, and that's yeah. Casey Lee. Yeah, and then I remember her voice. There's yeah. no way that voice could produce that. Um, no, well, I mean, I say that my singing voice is very different from my talking voice. True, but like, that's the exception, not the rule. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it's shocking to me that they never had Casey voice a character. Right? Like... I mean, like, she practically grew up with them. With them. And I guess now the evolution is now she's just the music director, which, girl boss. Yeah. Slow. Um, Nepotism at its finest. It's great. Like, this is nepotism we want. (laughs) Yes, this is nepotism we want. We love Casey. (laughs) We have a visitor. Hello. Come see me. Hey, 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 hey. No, come see me. I want to put you on camera. No. Okay, he doesn't want to be on camera. 
So, um, one last comment. Right. Okay, cool. The thing covered in hearts for this trailer is uh-huh. Sad White Girl. <laughs> <laughs> it's everyone's favorite. Everyone's favorite, you know, depressed white girl. Yeah. He stinks. This is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Were you outside? Black trailer. Black trailer. Not as good. Iconic in different ways. In different ways. <laughs> um, like, the sound mixing here... <laughs> so off and i say that as somebody who the first like five videos i made i was learning sound mixing and i'm still not great at it but like i don't want to give rooster teeth an excuse because they have made 10 seasons of red versus mm-hmm. blue at that point and multiple podcasts yeah. and you can barely hear what they're saying which is honestly kind of a good thing because what they're saying sucks yeah <laughs> but it's really it's like why does season one through five of rvb sound better than this Literally. <laughs> Which was recorded in a closet. Over the phone. Over the phone. <laughs> in a closet, over the phone. Um, oh. And you can, like, they had a sound booth and everything here, and you cannot hear, um, I know Aaron's name. I forget who voices Adam. Adam. Oh. Adam. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't remember. But it, it's all of it, because even the yeah. music... Yeah. It just sounds weird. It's still great. Yeah. I- Absolutely. Iconic. Iconic. But- I mean, we're going to say that a word a lot here with the trailers. I like the opening quote, but you had a great observation <laughs> about it before I read it. Your hopes have become my burden. I will find my own liberation. Hey. The first thing is that I feel mm-hmm. that that has a lot more to do with, like, a parent conflict. Right. Very much like, you know, what the ideals and your burden, liberation and all that. Less race war. <laughs> In my opinion. Because that's... And I agree. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. It's just, I don't think it's what I would come up with in context of... What, like, story winds up being. Yeah. Um, like, trying to create an equal society. So, um, <laughs> very interesting. Yes. I like it, like, outside in of that context. In a vacuum. Context. In a vacuum, <laughs> it's great. Right. right. Add it back into the context of her story, and you're like, oh... <laughs> Oh, no. no. Yeah. Everything Adam says is awful. <laughs> like, everything he says is oh, awful. Oh, God. The hard way. That was a quote. Looks like we're doing this the yeah. hard way. Oh, gosh. And the thing is, I, like, I kind of love his character design. Oh, it's great. I, like, I drew him a bunch. I remember. Because <laughs> he looks cool. I remember. And these original designs are so good. <laughs> yeah. Everything he says is awful. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but this sh- this trailer has some of my favorite standalone shots from the entire series. Like, Adam destroying the mech. Iconic. And Blake fading into just stark black as the train goes forward. With the pedals. With the pedals and the... It's beautiful. It was I love very it. Good. I wish the show used it more. And I can only think of, like, three times when they did it. And I hate one of the times <laughs> that they used God. it. I viscerally hate it. <laughs> yeah, that's... Um, Beautiful. And even, mm-hmm. once again, I really like the scenery, too. Mm-hmm. Having, like, the red forest. Yes. It's really nice. Gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's distinct. Yes. Um, I will say this is the first... Of course, there's, like, anime influences yeah. throughout, throughout all of them. It's, yeah. It's <laughs> anime American homework. anime. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the first one where I'm like, yeah... Yeah. yeah. I could see this. I, I could see this in, like, an episode of Naruto mm-hmm. or Soul Eater or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and <laughs> speaking of which, her weapon is, like, the first one where I'm like, hmm. Yeah. My brain can't comprehend. Because, mm-hmm. like, especially, like, the animation of the ribbon. Right. No. <laughs> like, I, it just doesn't quite add up for me yeah but like the things with like ruby's like scythe being so mechanical right makes so much more sense Mm -hmm. but no yeah the further the show gets along the less weapons feel like they're designed to fight monsters of evil and then they say trumpet (laughs) <laughs> it's literally just I'm a excited trumpet. for the trumpet. I'm not. <laughs> like, practica- like, trumpet and glow sticks. Like, your job is not to fight in a tournament. Your job is to fight monsters. Um, now, Ruby's feels like it was designed to fight monsters. And yeah. Weiss feels like it's designed to utilize dust in a way as a support system 
to help people who fight monsters. Mm -hmm. Blake's feels like an anime weapon. Yeah. Um, Any other thoughts? I'm trying to read my handwriting. The eternal struggle. (laughs) Um, Damn. I wonder what that says, because that sounded like it What about the funny. crew members? <laughs> <laughs> that we don't see. That we don't see. <laughs> we don't um, the implied crew members. <laughs> now, like, here's the thing. He's Him saying, I'll set the charges, implies that she knew that he was going to blow that fucking train up. Right? Right? <laughs> I gotta stop swearing. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, her haws. Her haws. That was fun. It was fun. It's, it's fun. back to the, just the cringe yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, but just a bit. And it's, like, went from lead saying nothing, red, a grunt or two in white, and then... Singing with a different voice actress. Yeah. And then, and then every grunt is a ha. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> um, and my last note mm-hmm. is about the music. Yep. It sounds so much more classic Jeff. Yes. Like, that um, is the Jeff that we know. Yeah, which... For better or worse. Like, I love the the stylistic departures in the red trailer and the white trailer. I wish he had done that more. Because going forward, most of the soundtracks are just hard rock metal, which are iconic. Yeah. Or generic pop song. And I wish we'd gotten a little bit more. He does have classical training. Yeah. Casey is trained for a reason. I want to hear more. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I don't think. My notes. All it right. looks so pretty. It did. I feel like um, they didn't say that enough. Yeah. It looks so cool. For no budget, it looks amazing. <laughs> Sounded horrible. Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Yellow trailer. Hello. All right. The, you had notes on the quote that were not about race war. Okay. Scathing eyes asked that we be symmetrical, yeah. one-sided, and easily processed. Yet every misshapen spark's unseen beauty is greater than its would-be judgment. Yeah. I just felt like... I wouldn't write that. There's the introduction <laughs> of the spark. There's a lot of things that we wouldn't write, though. <laughs> it's very true. I just I don't like the introduction of the spark imagery mm-hmm. and then leaving behind the imagery. Yeah. Just to say bluntly what the imagery could have said about the judgment. Right. But that's that was my biggest thing. Mm-hmm. It's okay, quat. Quat. Come quat. Come quat. <laughs> It's an okay quote. Yeah. Um, um, which, I mean, does tie into her being the son. Yeah. yeah. Um, but not the character. Right. Um, <laughs> I don't love the fact... I mean, I'm mixed on it. I love the fact that we get a remix of all the trailer songs in the club. I think that's really cool. But I also hate that it still makes her feel like a bit of an afterthought. Yeah. Because her part doesn't come in until like four minutes into the trailer (laughs) and it's like you don't really get a good read on who she is like those lyrics in the beginning do so much legwork for establishing who these girls Mm -hmm. kind of are and that's another shortcoming of ruby is that we barely know anything about ruby based on her own song because it's mostly just about the other four girls Mm -hmm. and that's like a like i guess that's why i keep coming back to the white trailer (laughs) as the white trailer does the best with like the individual character and at least with the black trailer you get opposing viewpoints now those opposing viewpoints kind of get awful (laughs) based on the race war but that's just a small thing that drives me nuts the dialogue is still bad but like in a so bad it's good way oh it's hilarious yes like it's like you said so bad it's good yes because black is just like cringe yeah there's no No. there's no enjoyment (laughs) you're you're laughing at it for sure Mm -hmm. but Yellow, I feel like I am laughing with it a little more. Exactly. That's a good way Um, of putting it. Junior, at one moment, points out that Yang is too young to be there, and not a minute later is saying, yes, I will kiss you, girl who is still 17. (laughs) Who's a minor? Who's a minor? Boys. That's in all caps for me. That is a minor. (laughs) It's what it says. (laughs) Um, um, right underneath who brings a hatchet to the club. Literally. <laughs> yeah, just, like, why are they fighting with Machete? <laughs> <laughs> like, at least Junior has his, his rocket launcher. Baz- it's, it's basically like a bazooka. Bazooka yeah. plus bats. Yes. Which is, like, it's the mix of two different things, just Ruby's thing. Yes. And then you turn to your left and there's Guy trying to cut down wood. <laughs> like, or the DJ bear. 
DJ Bear. <laughs> DJ Bear is everything. He's he very, is the moment. Yes. Iconic. As well as um, the twins. Yes. Hilarious. <laughs> uh, like, oh, that's a laughing with them moment for sure. Yes. Um, I'm very glad those are not the designs they went with with Ruby and Weiss. <laughs> I'm very glad. This would be a very different video. Oh, God. <laughs> um, oh. Yang's weapon is cool in the sense that you pointed out that it's very obviously anime inspired as well. But for me, again... These weapons are designed to hunt monsters, and it says a lot about her in the sense of this girl has no regard for her own mm-hmm. life, that she wants to get up close and personal and punch these monsters out. And it says it's really cool, and it says it does a lot of work with the character thing, whereas, like, every weapon says a lot about the personality, with the exception of probably Blake's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can't. I can't even, like, try to attach a meaning to it. No. Um,. Yeah, it's super cool. I will say both anime and, like, Street Fighter, mm-hmm. some of those classic, which are, like, those classic kind of video games, very much known for their intense women. Yeah. They're very, like, punchy focus and definitely, like, over-sexualized but also confident. Right. Which, is, like, both, like, love a girl boss, don't love sexualization of 17-year-olds. Yeah, it's a weird scale of trying to be balanced over here. Um, oh, I do love that. Yeah. Uh, what's that say? Um, that, <laughs> that's from the black. Um, that's that's why my, I can't read it. My black trailer note, which was the let's do this quote. <laughs> Jeez. Um, um, oh, I did have a note that said it sounds like they're recorded on two different mics. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. which, you know, cringe. But this, sorry, dog. Rascal is still here. <laughs> um, he refuses to be picked up, though, so just take our word for it. We're not, we're not crazy. Um, which is just funny. Also, call her daddy. Sure. Sir. Sir. Yeah. Sir. Call her sir. Call her, you know, she wants to be called sir. We're call not Call her daddy yet. energy. Um, I call well, your daughter daddy. <laughs> no, wait, that's not the right thing. <laughs> you know what I meant. <laughs> This is going great. Um, (laughs) Ruby's voice. Lindsay. I love Lindsay Ellis. They're great. Not Lindsay Ellis. That's that's the wrong word. Lindsay Jones. Mm -hmm. Lindsay Jones. Love them. I hate that voice. (laughs) And it's because I think they wanted her to sound younger. Like, the voice Lindsay does for Vanessa Kimball, that's great. I love the deeper tones of it, because that's very close to their natural voice. Mm -hmm. This is just, like, nails on a chalkboard for me. (laughs) Awful. I remember, like, mm-hmm. watching videos and hearing about how they listen to K-pop to get yeah, that voice. Yeah, I remember that from a production diary. Yeah, which makes feelings about. And definitely <laughs> just doesn't work. If you ever think you're talking <laughs> like a Korean girl, you're not. Don't try to. Please don't. And it just For doesn't. a number of reasons. Number of reasons. Don't. Um... <laughs> Because you may be stuck voicing a character from that voice. <laughs> it's just, it's not good. No. But it's also, like, so classic for me yeah. in my head. Like, Well, I can't imagine a different voice for yeah. Ruby, unfortunately. <laughs> Same thing with Weiss. I don't mix feelings about Weiss's voice. Yeah. I love and hate it. Kara settles into it better, I think. No. Yeah. Like, because Kara, and again, I don't know if it's Kara or Kara. This is professionalism at its finest it feels it gets a little deeper it gets a little Mm. fuller it's full like the tone is full the ruby voice it's stuck up here it is stuck in the nasally thing like when i'm listening to like a singer and they like slant rhyme like follow may instead of me it's like you're stuck up here Mm -hmm. and it's like you could have a much fuller tone if you enunciated that in a different way but um Anyways, my last note right. about Yellow Trailer mm-hmm. is that ending shot yes. with Ruby and Yang, and Ruby has the moon behind her, and Yang has the sun, question mark? I think so. Behind her? Beautiful. Stunning. Like, symbolism is already there, but it's nice to see it. Yes. It is symbolism so cool. doesn't mean anything unless you see the symbolism. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, we get to see the symbolism here. Uh, it's great. It's so cute. Um, Love it. So, mm-hmm. all in all... I guess my ranking of the trailers is probably the same as yours. It's white, red, yellow, black. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Sorry, Blake. Sorry, Blake. See, this is why. <laughs> Sorry, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> it's all Adam's fault. Adam's dragging Blake down from the minute she shows up on screen. Oh, God. You know what I mean? Like, it's all downhill from here, folks. <laughs> um, so we'll be back with Volume 1 Thoughts soon. <laughs> that was awful. I loved it. <laughs> Okay, so we just finished volume one. Um, oh, let me do this. <laughs> I understand why 13-year-old me liked it. Yes. Yes. Same. It is <laughs> so funny. It's hysterical. <laughs> like, unironically hysterical. And it's, <laughs> it's like, 13-year-old me was like, this is the peak of comedy. Yeah. Me now, I'm like, this is not the peak of comedy, and that makes it the peak of comedy. <laughs> Like, ugh, it's funny. And it does gag so well and not well at the same time. Yeah. It makes it adorable. Um, no, there are, I legitimately forgot how many, like, fun moments they did with just, like, changing the animation style or, mm-hmm. like, changing what their eyes showed. Yes. Really underrated in the fact that it's, like, not a lot is happening in the plot. <laughs> but you will be laughing. Yes. Um. So funny. <laughs> All right, shall we start with the intro, or do we just start with, like, first fight? I guess intro. Yeah. First thing being, the DVD does not offer subtitles. Yes. Um, I have the DVDs of volumes one through six, um, which kind of lines up as to when I quit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and the volume one DVD does not have subtitles, which is shocking to me because I am so reliant on subtitles to function as a person. And I guess I just remember watching it online. Yeah. So much more. R.I.P. the days when it was on YouTube. (laughs) Rest in peace. Rest in peace. But yeah, the intro is simple. You can't go wrong with this will be the day. Like, iconic opening. Yes. Number. But I think from here on out, the intros start trying to tell you too much of what's going to happen, which is a thing anime intros Mm -hmm. do. Like, yes, I have seen three parts of JoJo. I understand how this works. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But, like, I don't know if that's what this show needed. Yeah. Um, Yeah, Also, shout out to the fact that when these episodes were originally released, they shortened the intro because the episodes were too short in comparison to the actual length (laughs) of the intro. (laughs) Like, they had to cut it down from, like, a minute to, like, 30 seconds. They're like, we cannot inflate the runtime. I don't know, because now it just kind of seems like these are all the character models we have. Yeah. So we want you to know them. Yeah. And listen to Spawn Mask music, and then that's it. Mm Mm-hmm. And I guess it kind of develops into a little more later it does i don't remember the only thing like i'm trying to think of other intros i can remember and all i remember is them holding hands falling that's a that's from three i like two because i also really love time to say goodbye thematically it has nothing to do with happens in the volume (laughs) it should doesn't how about that intro oh the like story backstory intro if you can call it that. I will say, though it is, like, simple animation, I will always love, like, cute little storybook style yeah. animation. Yeah. Because I think it's cute. Yeah. And usually it makes it easier to animate. Animate. <laughs> well, it fits with the vibe of the storytelling mm-hmm. of repurposing fairy tales. And, you know, we get pretty far away from that. Now, granted, <laughs> in volume nine, they're literally in a fairy tale, to my understanding. And you are so lost. <laughs> um, valid. We should have stopped halfway through the volume, recorded our thoughts, and then went to the mm-hmm. second half of the volume because it's a lot to go back and cover. It did not feel like two hours. It felt like ten minutes. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll start with shadow people. <laughs> I'm, I don't want to sound like some stupid artistic hipster when I say that the aesthetics of the shadow people... I wish they had found a way to make it work long term mm-hmm. because there is something so interesting about it. And like I was referring to earlier, the idea that like you can never tell with Ruby the limitations of budget versus the limitations of artistic intent. With the shadow people, it works so well in the idea like these are aspiring hunters and huntresses who have 
the idea that they want to be heroes, but they have absolutely no grasp on the concept of the people they're actually <laughs> protecting. They're just faceless masses that do not matter to them, that don't register to them. And they only, you know, it's so funny looking out into a crowd of people and you only see, like, those are the characters you're supposed to be focusing on. But at the same time, that's their scope of the world. Mm -hmm. That's the juvenile mindset. That's, like, what being 17 is like. And I kind of love that. <laughs> and I get that they change it when they actually have the money to animate it. And I remember the Volume 2 commentary when they were so excited to not use the Shadow People anymore. But, like, I don't know. There's something... It could... It, there's something there. Um, unintentional, charm. but there's something there. For sure. It's charm. And then I always, like, equate it to, like, the anime inspiration. Because yeah. that's, like, the, you know, classic joke. Yeah. Like, who's the main character? And it's... <laughs> The one that's wearing a bright red cape mm -hmm. compared to everyone not having a face. <laughs> but, I mean, ideally, like, I would have been chill if they kept the shadow people. Mm -hmm. Maybe invested money in something else with the animation. Yeah. The running yeah. animation. <laughs> Woof. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's, um, it's funny. Yeah, it's funny. Um, it's not like a... It doesn't... I don't really care. Um, it's like a funny thing to observe, but like it doesn't detract from the experience. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's what the problem is with a lot of people who get like... They dwell on that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's not the problem. But it's... When a show does enough good, you don't care about the bad. Yeah. And like... Like, if I remember correctly, we're going to get to the parts where it... It's just a dog pile of <laughs> stuff. And again, I've, I sound like such a Debbie Downer here. <laughs> Gray Haddock, terrible human being, wonderful voice actor. Um, yes, him as Roman so Torchwick good. is the standout vocal performance of the volume. Let him say fuck. Let him say fuck, fuck 2023, <laughs> or I guess 2013. Please, God, tell me it has not been a decade. <laughs> Jesus. Ah! Um, but the opening fight scene is good, um, if a little cowboy bebop. Mm, for sure. Oh, sorry. Can't I cannot wait. read your handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. <laughs> <laughs> the classic use of a character wearing headphones yes. during the scene, yes. being unaware. The first thing I always think of is Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah. Stanley is the janitor or whatever. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Love it. Good trope. I'm glad they used that. Oh, yeah, it's a favorite, um, especially with the shifting diegesis with the music coming from her mm -hmm. headphones. I don't know. It's just good. It's good. Them being turned off by her headphones? Yes. No, I, I haven't really had any headphones that work like that, but... I wish. Um, <laughs> no, I use, like, those skull candy earbuds that, like, $10 a pop at Target. I just yes. I, I destroy those things. Sunglasses and earbuds. I just destroy them like it's like second nature and so i'm scared to invest in like actually good headphones because they they will die <laughs> they they will meet me and die oh, <sighs> kind of going back to the story book ness mm -hmm. i didn't comprehend any of it no the only thing i got from it was cocaine <laughs> that's like the dust the dust yeah yeah and of course like it's this thing that people use and it's important Mm -hmm. Apparently. Apparently. <laughs> um, no, I think they just wanted to get into it, mm -hmm. and they didn't know how to. Like, there's this yeah. whole... Like, when I took a screenwriting class in college, a lot of things happened, primarily trauma. But there was a lesson of if your story starts with a voiceover, that is the showing your hand and cards of you did not know how to start this. Mm -hmm. And that applies here, I think. Because there's really no good way to start a show like this. Yeah. And very true. Yeah. Especially coming from, like, you have the trailers. Like, anyone that's watching the first episode has watched the trailers. The trailers. And they got hooked on the trailers. Yeah. So. And it's like, but it doesn't feel right to start on the dust robbery. Yeah. It's, it's weird. It's weird. Because, I mean, it's just weird because I'm not even sure what I would do instead. Yeah, I, I have no notes. Mm -hmm. I have, like, a story suggestion later, mm -hmm. but I don't have any clue here. Now, I guess the problem is just the... They have to go to school, and you have to expedite her getting into the school two years 
later yeah. because then her being Yang's sister does not mathematically work. It's already a little mathematically <laughs> odd. Um, Ty Yang, you have some explaining <laughs> to do, sir. Math ain't mathin'. It, the math ain't mathin'. <laughs> and I'm not good at math. <laughs> I, no, I don't, I'm not script doctor here. It's just, they started it. That's, yeah. that's one thing I will commend. It's like, <laughs> sitting down to try and write anything is like, and they did it, mm. for better or worse, they did it. <laughs> Take a nickel for every time I say for better or worse. For worse. Like, every time Weiss says, how dare you, <laughs> this volume. <laughs> so I keep on mentioning, like, the anime re- references. Right. Of course, shout out to the Full Metal Alchemist magazine. Right. That's, like, one of the things that, like, got me into it. I was like, oh, they like Full Metal Alchemist, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so I like So three. relatable. <laughs> but, so, because... This obviously takes, like, story inspiration from Full Metal Alchemist and, like, Soul Eater. They were some of the biggest, like, American Western-driven animes. I will take your word during for During that time. I have not seen them. <laughs> <laughs> Highly recommend. But. You think I have Metal- the time for that? <laughs> <laughs> the next project, Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> Full Metal Alchemist, all the movies, and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. I couldn't even finish a seven-episode web series someone asked me for back in December. <laughs> <laughs> and you actually can't find Full Metal Alchemist original series, like, anywhere online, so it'd be really fun for us to watch. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, mm-hmm. i say a big difference, and I think one of Ruby's faults... Yeah. ...is, like, Full Metal Alchemist... Better, of course. Well, duh. <laughs> but it has magic, like mm-hmm. Ruby, except it knows how to focus on the science of the magic... Yeah. Because magic is alchemy, whatever, science magic. Mm-hmm. And Ruby is like, here's the magic of the science. Here's like... Yeah. Without actually giving us anything. No. Like, no comprehension, despite the fact that we have classroom scenes explaining the world to us. Which are too busy used as, like, comic <laughs> relief, and to casually mention the recontextualization of a race war. <laughs> yes. Um, we'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> um... Silver eyes. <laughs> I have that too. <laughs> I have a it won't show doodle. up on camera, yeah. um, but we both wrote it. I wrote mine in all caps. I have a little doodle of eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a nothing thing. I was going to say, like, I remember it being a nothing thing. And it's even from what I remember. still a nothing <laughs> thing. And... Like, it's such a weird thing to point out, especially because he knew her mom. Oh. But, like, this is my memory of it. Like, they went to school with mm-hmm. him, and that was the professor, and they all, like, knew him. So it's like, gen- I don't know why he's so shocked by the genetics. Yeah. But then again, I don't know how genetics work, because Yang is out here with blonde hair <laughs> and purple eyes when her father has blonde hair and blue eyes. <laughs> And her mother has black hair and red eyes. Red and Does blue. blonde make the dominant gene? Well, usually it's like man. I did not do well in biology. Well, me either. <laughs> it's a nothing thing. And it's such a weird... It's a concept that they say and it doesn't... It's not until like volume three where it does anything. Mm-hmm. And even then... It doesn't do anything. (laughs) Right, right. Yang being glad that Ruby gets into Beacon (laughs) and then switching back and forth for like the next 10 minutes on, well, hang out with me. Don't hang out with me. Mm -hmm. I have other friends. You need to make other friends. We need to be like, hey, is it you in the forest? Nope. (laughs) It's a bit confused. Like they, you can tell they just don't really know what they want Yang to be. Mm -hmm. Also, they're all way too pale. Way too pale. The only one that doesn't hurt physically to look at is Jean. And even then, his foundation shade would still be the palest in Rihanna's line. <laughs> like, like he's still, he's still pale. <laughs> he's st- so pale. He really is. Um, like, he is the whitest person in the cast. It, not, not skin tone wise, but just like personality wise. <laughs> he is the whitest person in the cast. <laughs> Which is saying a lot because everyone in the main cast is white except for Ren who is ambiguously Asian. Is Blake not ambiguously Asian? Blake is ambiguously racial stand-in. Worm. Weird. (laughs) 
I love it when Weiss explodes. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty good, pretty good. I love the dust coming off. It's funny. Yes. It's all funny. I I love Weiss, my racist little white girl, my <laughs> billionaire. She's hilarious. She's so sarcar- <coughs> sarcastic. <laughs> um, and I refuse to believe that she's 17. God, no. Um, <laughs> no, I think the thing that Weiss is so funny is that she and Ruby share custody of a brain cell and that drives <laughs> Weiss insane. <laughs> like, she hates that about herself. <laughs> I, was, um, I love that. It's great. Um, and my favorite line, I think, from the entire volume is Yang, deadpan. Oh my god, you literally exploded. <laughs> um now there are better lines i think but that one is just so yeah that was really and that one just hit me really you know line. i felt it in my soul mine of course is i'm leagues better than you girl um, boss <laughs> um weiss and blake throughout like the whole sh- i don't know for first season yeah. at least yeah it's like a thing yeah it's a different thing because like wife does wife Weiss. Weiss does not have, like, any beef with Yang. Right. But she has a conflict with Ruby and then a conflict with Blake. Right. And <laughs> I don't think I wrote this maybe during, like, the class scene or something. I don't mm-hmm. remember. Weiss and Blake are, like, College of Liberal Arts and College of Business, like, <laughs> attacking each other. Like, I, like, I could... I just remember being those exact arguments with... Cobb brews. Yeah. As a cola gal. <laughs> um, so, I don't know. I just... That makes the characters fit for me. Mm-hmm. My head. I mean, that comparison. Well, what's even more iconic with you is that you literally majored in undecided. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Indeed. Like, she did three minors. And what was the typical term for it? Um, it's called interdisciplinary studies. Okay. Um, um, uh, it's called... Undecided. Yeah. Um, I say I majored in ADHD. <laughs> um, also known as sociology, English, fashion merchandising, and retail studies. English. English. <laughs> um, okay, what else? What else? What else? <laughs> okay, I love Blake in her second scene of just please leave me alone. <laughs> because that has been me. Um, where it's just like, I am actually reading here. And I am not in a mood to talk. Mm-hmm. I would love to get back to this book as <laughs> soon as you leave. <laughs> it's hilarious. And then I, I do think Ruby's... Ruby's... I'm surprised that I think her speeches are so cute Rewatching this. They're very endearing. Like, like oh, I want to be like a hero. Mm-hmm. Like, Yang inspired me when I was younger by reading to me. Yeah. I'm like, that is adorable. Well, it's very good um, in terms of like character development. Because mm-hmm. like... And I remember in volume two, they all get analyzed. They all get like grilled by Ublik, why are you here? Which, again, just watch Red vs. Blue. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea that he never asks Ruby that question oh. because she knows why she's here. And I think that's the the de-evolution over the volumes. Spoiler. Is that she stops mm-hmm. truly believing why she's here. I like Ruby and Jean's friendship. Like, it's cute. It fits. It fits. It's, it fits. It's cute. It's adorable. Like, that tracks. Um... I will now let you have the floor to gush about Nora and Ren. They're so bloody cute! <laughs> Let's see, what was, um... <laughs> they give off um, ADHD and autistic pals a little bit together. They're so cute. He remembers her dreams, which is adorable, and corrects her. I love a good friend to lovers, and I know that doesn't apparently technically happen, why fan fiction fan fiction exists fan fiction oh god i oh <laughs> uh, do you remember when riley would pull up our friend riley would pull up fan fiction in class <laughs> like in the middle of chemistry class I can't... we did not learn chemistry um for no. a, a number of assorted reasons that was one of them <laughs> or we would watch ruby amvs in class just like raw dog in it 80 <laughs> percent of my music taste comes from ruby and rvb amvs and I wish I was madder about it. <laughs> the other 20% is Taylor Swift. <laughs> oh, as it should be. As it should be. Anyways, yeah, they're so cute. Um, I love them so much. Mm-hmm. Ren's perfect. Nora's perfect. We can move on. We can move on. Mm-hmm. Um, the entire forest arc 
of them in the initiation scene. I love it. It's like instant serotonin for me. It's good. (laughs) Because it's just, it's not like, the worst thing about it is the Pura aura speech. Mm -hmm. Because it just does not fit with anything else. And even then that saved a little with Ren. Fighting the snakes. What are they called? It's, oh, I don't know what they're called. But it's done so well. Mm Because even though I'm not caring about the speech that's going on, but having her mention, like, the lightness, and then you see the white part of the snake or whatever show up, I'm like, yes, this is satisfying to witness. Oh, yeah. Um, That's the only thing that saves it. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, Ren's weapons always gave me the vibe, and they especially give it now, of just plastic. Like, they don't feel real. And they don't do any damage, ever. Yeah. Like, he, d- he doesn't beat the snakes with his <laughs> weapons. He beats them with his raw hands. <laughs> he just breaks <laughs> their teeth. And stabs stabs it wrong. with the teeth, which is so metal. <laughs> He's so cool. So metal of Monty to do that. And Monty, like, it is just his voice, but there is such a gentleness to it that is so undervalued. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you mentioned it. We're watching right. Ha- let Monty letting his character Get be KO'd. the one that gets beaten up. Because <laughs> like, I'm like, and not as comic relief. Because Miles seems like he would only do that as comic relief. Right. Monty like, lets it happen because it's a 17 year old. Yep. That's in this stage of his battling life for mm-hmm. the first time, and he gets his bell wrong. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Guy, that guy's concussed. <laughs> If it wasn't for magic, he'd be dead. I think of the four pairs that we got, Blake and Yang immediately are the only ones that actually feel like a partnership of and the four. feel their age. They feel like they're 17. Like, or, like, they just seem like the oldest. Right. Which shouldn't be a thing. Right. Like, Pierre's definitely the most mature, but yeah. she doesn't, like, I, I'm like, yeah, she's the same age as, like, John and Weiss. She's just, like, matured faster. She's Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But I'm, I'm convinced Yang and Blake are, like, 20. <laughs> they act it. Um, they act a little older. Mm-hmm. And part of that might tie into, and it's unintentional, Yang having to grow up so fast mm-hmm. with her background and Blake... <laughs> <laughs> Red Light Roses Part 2 <laughs> is godly. <laughs> It is so good. Like, I have the poster with the song lyrics over my bed. It is so good. It has nothing to do with anything happening on screen. (laughs) It is such a good song. Uh, The chess pieces. Um, I like that they have... Not very well thought out, but the symbolism of, like, what each piece represents. Like, just the simple thing of Team Cardinal has the Black Bishop, whereas both... Juniper and Ruby have white pieces. Um, But the idea that a rook goes only in, like, straight lines, whereas a knight can do, like, that one, two hook, the L, that it's, like, it's coming at you and then it does something unconventional. And that's what I think that Ruby with the Nevermore represents. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, they run at the Deathstalker in a straight line, whereas they kind of do something really unconventional Mm -hmm. to take down the Nevermore. Nora picking the queen, obvious reasons. I'm queen of the castle, (laughs) I'm queen of the castle. Um, Kind of talking about, like, the two comparisons of the teams. Right. There's something with the forest, of course, is that it does really well at showing you why they get chosen as leaders, like Jean and Ruby. Mm -hmm. Because they may have mixed feelings about Jean as character, and even Ruby sometimes. But, I don't know, they just did really well. Like, I, watching it... For first time in years, I'm, like, not surprised right. to see them be the leaders. Mm-hmm. Um, just because, like, they show Ruby, like, telling him what to do, and even John. Comes up with a plan. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. Um, and also, it's kind of, like, silly. Blake and Ren's weapons are a little similar. Like, really similar. Yes. Which I think is interesting to have that you know, something like that on both teams. I, mm-hmm. I want to, like, analyze and compare their weapons and fighting styles from mm-hmm. team to team. I didn't do that. Um, we have time. 
We have like eight more. Vo- this this is either <laughs> yeah. going to be a 10 hour video or 10 <laughs> one to two hour videos. Um, We're just so smart. <laughs> <laughs> Everything we think needs to be said and heard. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to talk about with the Forest Arc? Mm-hmm. The only other thing I've written down during during that time right. is I like seeing Weiss exhausted. Yeah. Whenever she does the glyphs mm-hmm. or semblance. Semblance. <laughs> um, it was good. It, they pay so much more attention to detail than I remember them yeah. doing. Well, that's the little things yeah. that you don't think that they would pay attention to. I feel like the show, and maybe this is, like, again, part of the reason that we're rewatching. I feel like they lose that mm-hmm. over the time, which makes less sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, that might just be me misremembering it, or me just really hating the direction the show takes. <laughs> but, like, it's the little things of Weiss being exhausted afterward, mm-hmm. or jumping ahead a little bit, the shells of mm-hmm. Sun's gun flying off. Just, like, the little things like that. Yeah. Stop happening. Or just even the facial expressions, where they don't have mm-hmm. any budget, and, like, you know exactly what these characters are thinking. Yeah. And it's it's pretty impressive. It is. For no budget. It's very impressive. All right. Done with Forest. Everything Classrooms? else is boring. <laughs> 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 education like okay. my, my main note is literally can we go back to the forest <laughs> my biggest complaint is i so confused on what these schools that they apparently went to beforehand taught them yeah because as far as i can tell it's only weapons and like training on mm-hmm. how to use said weapons because why are they just now learning about the different grim like, I remember even during the four scenes, sorry, I went directly back, I remember being confused on why Pyrrha didn't know about the scorpion. Yeah. Like, shouldn't, shouldn't you know all this by now if you're going to be sent to fight these things? Well, they're sent to fight them. They're not meant to survive the fights. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. My mistake. My mistake. They're kind of just being sent as, like... Yeah. Cannon fodder to die. Literally shot into, into this the forest. forest. Like, we will not intervene. You will die. Um, I, and then even the war, fauna war, um, civil rights. A civil war. rights war that is more commonly known as the Faunus War, which in and of itself is an act of retroactive history reconstruction of people who are in tr- control <laughs> of rewriting the narratives. See, they don't even realize they occasionally do do a much better job of portraying, like, what real-world racism comes across as. Disclaimer, we are both white. <laughs> In case you couldn't tell. Um, Context. horrible reveal. Um, I think all I wrote for the Ruby Weiss fight again is bunk beds smiley face (laughs) that was really yeah i did the i always wanted bunk beds as a kid as a kid i mean that's a good line it's cute it's sweet it says a lot and it's like it melts her yeah she does a lot of melt refreeze melt Mm -hmm. refreeze this first volume because they haven't like it's like time is a flat circle here Mm -hmm. like say they'd hit reset every time they need weiss to be a bitch yeah yeah which i will say a little realistic when dealing with certain kind of people. Um, being like, oh, hey, what if we didn't hate someone because they were younger than us? And they're like, yeah, I learned my lesson. Don't hate people because they're younger than us. And then it's something else that they immediately need to... Racist. <laughs> Racist queen, wise. One thing before getting onto Jean... Um, why the fuck does this professor hit on Yang? Ah! <laughs> why? Poor. It's what the hell was that? So gross. It's disgusting. Like, that man. And she's very uncomfortable with it for mm-hmm. so many good reasons. It's just like. I was yeah. gonna say something about Ryan Haywood as a person. Hmm. <laughs> 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 Enough said. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on to Jean. I hate it. <laughs> 
Um, okay. Carden Winchester is like the bully from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, aka homophobic homosexual who comes out to Xander. And it's like, I just can't see that. I see Xander as Jean, which is not a good thing because <laughs> I hate Xander. <laughs> because Xander is Joss Whedon's self insert, and Miles is Jean. Like, is Jean. Like, there is no. Yeah. We can be nice about it, but that's the truth. And it applies when Carrie starts voicing mm-hmm. Neptune, Nept- Neptune. It applies when Carrie starts voicing Neptune next volume, mm-hmm. too, of just like, I'm a cool dude. Yeah. Girls like me. Yeah. It's bad. Mm-hmm. But everything ties back to Buffy the Vampire Slayer to me. But, like, again. For those who haven't watched Buffy, do. Do. But. <laughs> Or don't. It might ruin your life. (laughs) It ruined my life. Another example of what we're talking about is from Glee. (laughs) Um, Kurt's bully, who, like, forces himself on the Kurt. Yeah. Mm. That's the same energy that this man gives. He's the gayest man I've seen animated. Which is a really... I hate that trope (laughs) of, like, the internalized homophobia turning into aggression Mm -hmm. like it's like one of the only things hollywood or media knows how to portray and it's like it's not that it isn't real but there are so many other avenues you could take and it's not even what they were intending they just wanted a bully arc yeah also they all point out that carden is a bully and they understand that that's bad and none of them step in to help velvet which is just casual racism at its finest casually getting hate crimes yeah (laughs) like actual harassment and Pira is like, oh, I hate this man. And, and then like, she eats a chicken nugget. <laughs> <laughs> a dinosaur shaped chicken nugget. Very pretty. Head cannon. <laughs> um, no, mm. like they're all just like, oh, I hate people like that. It's like, you are literally supposed to defend the masses. Mm-hmm. And you are not even standing up for your classmate, who, as it turns out, in next volume, is their upperclassman. She's mm. older than them. Which is even weirder that she's getting picked on by a freshman. Yeah. But they didn't intend for it. It, She's voiced by a fan of the show, if I remember correctly. Meg Turney? Why do I? Yes. Why do I remember that? Why do I think you're correct? Maybe I follow her on Insta. You probably do. I remember it. You follow a lot more people on Insta (laughs) than I do. I didn't know you could directly message people on Instagram for like two years. Oh, wow. Um, I felt like. I was evolving as a human being when I realized. And then I felt bad because, like, seven people had messaged me. <laughs> and I didn't, <laughs> I just didn't know. I had no, no idea. idea that they had reached out to me. And I'm like, I am so sorry that I ignored you for two years. <laughs> I I don't know how I've made it this far as a YouTuber. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't like the genre arc, but no one likes the genre arc. I don't think anybody says, wow, I love Ruby. My favorite arc <laughs> is the genre arc. <laughs> My other notes, mm-hmm. John needs therapy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, Everyone I've, could use some therapy. It's, yeah. It does wonders. Um, Nora's so cute. It's also one of my notes from John's <laughs> arc. All the syrup. <laughs> cute. Um, I, I don't remember why, but this is when I wrote that the, like, this is so rare, but this show would be better if the characters were aged down. Normally, I think... The opposite yeah. in almost every, like, high school mm-hmm. show. I'm like, oh, this would be so much better if it was set in college or whatever. But I think it would really benefit this show if I wasn't thinking about how, theoretically, all these characters should be preparing for college. Right. Like, I know they don't. Right. I guess upper education isn't a thing. I guess this is the upper education. <laughs> <laughs> That's depressing. And they're just now learning what Grimm are. <laughs> Anyways. And dust. And Ruby doesn't know what dust is. Well, now granted, she was two years younger. No, that doesn't work. No. It doesn't work. It um, doesn't work because... It doesn't work. She says at their academy, they get to create their own weapons. Weiss's mm-hmm. re- weapons is uses dust as part of her magic, therefore yeah. implying that other people can use dust as part of their magic. So she would have known about this. I think you're reading too much into it. <laughs> I think it's just they don't know what they're doing. They don't. They don't. <laughs> they don't. 
Um, which valid, no one does. <laughs> That's the great lie of life is no one knows what they're doing. It's true. It's including true. us. Including especially us. 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 We, <laughs> we don't even know if this is going to be 10 hours or 10 one hour. It's turning into 10 hours. <laughs> Jumping off of that, if they were younger and they spent more time in school that was better applied because mm-hmm. we jump into the vital festival is coming and it's like we mm-hmm. have had too many non-arcs about nothing mm-hmm. and now we're introducing a global tournament where we don't even know anything about the kingdom that we're in yeah like we know nothing oh. about veil vale. nothing nothing other than that this is where we are yeah oh, wait, we know months have passed they say it yeah they just <laughs> <laughs> they skip right on ahead nothing interesting happened for months and I feel like there's so much more that could have been done. And they just rushed right ahead because they're like, one of these days we're going to have a tournament arc. (laughs) That day's now. (laughs) That day is coming right now, man. Get ready. Uh, Racist Weiss. Racist Weiss. My beloved. (laughs) I put a little heart. (laughs) Don't get me wrong. I hate a racist, but I love a racist (laughs) Weiss. I, just something about this character, I think it's hilarious. I tried to write down every, um, thing that she called the Faunus. Uh, liars, thieves, murderers, filthy scum, pure evil, uh, all they do is lie, cheat, and steal. Scoundrels. Scoundrels. Rapscallion. Rapsc- she said rapscallion. She said rapscallion. Um, and I'm also including the garbage can line as, like, she called them garbage <laughs> Would I not call this trash can? A trash can? Oh, God, she's so funny. It's very funny. Um, It doesn't... It's not supposed to come off as funny. Yeah. It's hysterical. It's... Interesting conflict. Theoretically interesting. At least between the two. Rice and Blake. Right. Because coming from very different spots... Right. And I empathize with one a little more than the other... Gee, I wonder which one. <laughs> Can't possibly be the one that was denied basic human rights for the majority of her existence. It's obviously the poor, tortured white girl. Poor, tortured white girl. I mean, like, the inter- the line about knowing board members who got executed, that's bleak. Yeah. That's dark. But it just ties into the greater white fang problem, which mm-hmm. has been talked about at large, of they just... This feels like a general misunderstanding of two white men who... We're fed the narrative in school that MLK, good. Mm -hmm. Malcolm X, bad. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, not the case at all. The government hated both of them (laughs) equally at the time uh, in the 60s. Yeah. Um, And it's just, I really wish that they didn't write about this. Mm -hmm. It's, It's just not... It doesn't fit. No. It doesn't fit the tone. It doesn't fit the atmosphere. And they don't say anything interesting about it. Mm-hmm. Like, it's one thing that if you want to talk about it because you have an interesting perspective on it. And their perspective is racism is bad, but also the race, the, the subjects of racism then become the terrorists. And it's like, it's like the Falcon mm-hmm. and the Winter Soldier problem. Where, uh, I forget her name. Was it Mm -hmm. Carly? That sounds right. I I watched the show once. I hated it. (laughs) It was mid. But the idea that the narrative that's constantly pushed is the idea that, like, oh, yeah, you deserve human rights, but also you're going about fighting for your Mm -hmm. basic humanity the wrong way. And that's the kind of narrative that is pushed out by people who have a lot to lose if the status quo gets disrupted. Mm -hmm. And that's what comes off wrong about it is because they don't understand that in the process of saying that, they're saying that the status quo doesn't need radical changes. And it does. Mm -hmm. And you can't cover that in a 10-minute episode where you introduce two of the best characters in the series. (laughs) Ah! Sun and Penny! Sun and Penny are... Like, like hearing the story that Monty just kind of came back with two characters, unfortunate from a writing perspective. <laughs> from a show perspective, they are amazing. They're so good. Mm-hmm. They're, they have stayed characters that I love, with no question. Mm-hmm. Like, them, Norm, Ren, 
those two like come a little iffy as I kept on hearing more updates from you as you watched it. <laughs> but they've always remained pretty much loved. Weiss kind of faded away. It's not that but... Weiss faded away. It's that Weiss goes from racist to I have friends who are faunus <laughs> and then just stopped there and yeah. didn't keep growing. Yeah. yeah. But Sun and Penny always remained characters that I love. Yeah. Like even like not watching the show. Yeah. Talk about I still have their t shirts. Yes. Um, next time we'll maybe next time, maybe the time after that. Who knows? Yes. At one point we'll be wearing the shirts that we got when we were thirteen. Yes. They held up very well for so cute. Um there's a lot of really great moments in the last two episodes when you don't think about the horribly handled mm-hmm. racism subplot. Mm-hmm. Um everything Penny says is great. The great. it's a combat skirt. Great. So cute. It's so great. So cute. I love, love when Penny's like, we can go get our nails painted and talk about boys or whatever. And what nails? <laughs> <laughs> what nails, first of all. To directly mirror Weiss's sarcasm. Yes, as like unadulterated sincerity. Yes. I love that. And then I do, <laughs> I do mixed feelings about Ruby being like, is this how I was when you first met me? I hate that. I'm like, girl, yeah. Of course, my sarcastic queen, Weiss. Said no, she's much more coordinated. coordinated. <laughs> this is after she's been pushed to the ground, ground. and laid there. <laughs> the same. You know what? I've been knocked to the ground quite a lot, and I've I spend more time on the ground than I do on my own two feet. <laughs> At one point, you just say it's better down mm-hmm. here, less pain down here. <laughs> well, um, yeah. These characters are great. They're some of the most like well thought out when it comes to like who what, you know, story characters they're based off of. The allusions to the fairy tale yeah. slash inspiration. Yeah. yeah Absolutely. Like, Monkey King, amazing. This having the staff. Gunchucks. Gunchucks. <laughs> so cool. And then also just like what I remember of the Monkey King having his character design just be like this open shirt and a chain. I'm like that is exactly what I would have the Monkey King look like today. Mm-hmm. Um, and the idea that, like, Penny's weapons are on strings, okay. like the pin- Pinocchio. There ain't no strings on me. And, of course, the allusion to Hatsune Miku. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Yep. Like, it's just so well thought out. Because, like, immediately, like, we know she's not real. <laughs> like, she's real. Like, yeah. Because, typically, if you're watching this, you were also... Like, probably heard Hatsune Miku. And so that's, like, red flag. And then you see, the like, the strings coming out of her back. And there's, like, oh, maybe it's part of the backpack. No. no. But. Well, I also uh, like that they don't really waste time in revealing that she is mm-hmm. indeed a robot. Yeah. But then, you know, Penny will be like, you have a heart, you have a soul. Good stuff. We'll mm-hmm. get there. I keep getting ahead of myself. Um, <laughs> it's it's hard, it's not, hard to. not to because it's, like. I remember, I have an eidetic memory, so I remember a lot. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't remember everything. It's just, like, it's hard not to watch this with the context of what's to come Mm -hmm. that I have in my head. Mm -hmm. And some of it I'm just like, oh, cute, that actually does pay off. Not a lot of that. Not a lot of that happening. But there are moments. (laughs) Now, that being said, the White Fang's name is obviously inspired by the Jack London novel. It's been forever since I've read it. I don't think they read the book (laughs) i do not know this book um it's often compiled with call of the wild um jack london it was published back in like 1905 so i guess it is free uh it's probably in the free domain now Mm -hmm. um but it's about a wolf dog who is constantly searching for freedom which is like the very very cliff notes version (laughs) of the book I mean, it's an interesting allusion to the name, mm-hmm. but I also feel like the reason they wanted Blake to be from an activist background is because they thought the pun on the Black Panther movement would have been funny. Oh, God, probably. Yeah. Like, they're like, oh, she's a cat. She's a black cat. She's a black cat. Dare I say a puma. <laughs> <laughs> Watch Red vs. Blue instead. Oh, uh, and I hate when Weiss is like, you know, has her moment of being, like, her apology. It's not an apology. Whatever. Like, <laughs> I don't care. I care about you. Blah, blah, blah. You said you're not a part of them, right? 
And Blake's like, yeah, no connection anymore. First of all, <laughs> they're just never going to address the fact that she was, like, beating up the white fang. That's where they met up. Which, I mean, if I was Weiss, putting myself in the mindset of racist Weiss, <laughs> I'd be like, hey, yo, are you sure you're not connected with them anymore? But, what do I know? I just hate that Blake is so determined to separate herself from that. Yeah. Which, no, they just don't know how to write. Yeah. Something like this. They just don't know how to write. They just don't know how to write. End. <laughs> um... <laughs> Which, relatable. <laughs> and that's the header. Yeah. This is, subtext is, especially something like this, viewpoint of a minority. <laughs> Which, they're just, they're not. They're not. They are white, cis, heterosexual men yeah. who live in Texas. Yeehaw. Austin, Texas, but Texas. I, I think Wings is probably one of my favorite songs from the entire OST. And it's not because it's particularly interesting from a musical standpoint. I just think it's that it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it's it's nice to put on and listen to. It was a nice closing. It is. It's a good closing. Nothing happened, mm -hmm. but it's such a good song, and it makes me feel better. Now, what's really funny is that I remember we couldn't figure out if the line was, I know you can't stand the thought of being stray. And some people thought it was, I know you can't stand the thought of being straight. <laughs> Oh, um, <laughs> both are valid. Um, <laughs> is there anything else that you wanted to cover? Um, Sun and Blake were together for two days before we see them again. What were they doing? What were they doing? Where were they staying? Like, you could have... This is all going back to the same thing we've been discussing. Mm -hmm. It's like, they could have just not said that. Yeah. And then I would have been like, oh, they've been hanging out for a night. I mean... That makes sense. Impressive. Yeah. You know, and no reason they're drinking coffee. Tea. Tea. She's a, she's a tea gal. <laughs> she's definitely... But... Oh, that's so weird. Oh, that kind of brings... They? That's a great question. But, like, the thing that I remember that I wanted to talk about... If you want an efficient story, and as much as I love Son, the character she needs to be talking to is Yang. Mm hmm It does not... It, she should not be talking to Son. Because Yang and Sun have very interchangeable personality traits in yeah. a way, and it would make so much more sense if she was telling a human yeah. the backstory of the White Fang instead of a fellow Faunus who is who literally calls her dumb for being like, yeah, everybody knows who the White Fang are, Blake. Mm -hmm. um, it, it would work better if you would have just... You don't get in a lot of them of being partners here on out. Like, you'd have Ruby and Weiss looking. Mm -hmm. And Ruby breaks off with Penny because maybe Weiss is just indignant about all of it. But then you have Yang and Blake actually, like, talking. <laughs> I don't know. Radical change, I know. And I yeah. love Sun. I love Sun. The gun checks, Sun. like, again, inscribed mm -hmm. in my heart. It does not work as a season finale. Yeah. What makes it cool seeing Roman again, and the fight scene. Yeah. Missing Penny and Son fight characters that we shouldn't be emotionally attached to at all yet. Who but. I instantly became emotionally attached to. <laughs> um, like, fave. <laughs> I don't know. I guess it's m so much of the nostalgia of it that... It's very hard to detach the nostalgia for me, yeah, too. That I'm like, it's okay. <laughs> I'm like, here is its faults. Yeah. And really outside of the, like race war handling <laughs> i like accept almost all of those faults yeah um agreed like i had such a good time with this volume mm -hmm. and some of it is just legitimate nostalgia but again it's not for what it is it's not bad yeah like there's a reason people latched onto it yeah. after such a mediocre showing mm -hmm. now i remember loving volume two so going into it, it's going to be really interesting to see if I share that. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see. But a thing that we could do now is that we start, after we watch a volume, we do a ranking. Okay. So obviously we're both at one. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you already know how the trailers are ranked for us. So, yeah. um, And there are a few other trailers that come along later in the line that are worth... They're not worth watching, but we need to watch them. Are there trailers for two? There are... 
There are three character shorts for Volume 5, which is where all the budget went. Mm. There's a character short for 6, which is the Adam character short. <laughs> Woo! And I think that's it. Because I think they learned their lesson. Mm. <laughs> um, there's a separate trailer for Volume 4, which was them introducing the them using the Maya engine. Okay. Um, but... Yeah, not a lot of trailers, but stuff worth looking at outside of the show itself. The quirk of having the DVD is that we have access to the best DJ remix of all time. Ursa, Ursa, Ursa in the woods. <laughs> it's got Cardin. So good. Um, I would have that on repeat every day. Oh, it's great. Iconic. Love Russell. <laughs> great character. He knew about Sage Green before it was the color of the year. <laughs> so. I don't know any better closing statement than that. <laughs> um, we will be back with Volume 2 yeah. in an indisclosed period of time. We both work. It's hard to, it's hard to coordinate <laughs> as adults. But uh, as always, thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to... How can I beat like, comment, and subscribe? I hate myself for saying it. <laughs> yeah, comment down below. Uh, Smash that like button. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, but seriously, thank you. And uh, we'll be back with another installment soon. Hey!